picture this. It's 4th of July 2012 and hundreds of scientists gathered in a room at CERN. They are waiting for big news. They are about to announce the discovery of the Higgs boson, a particle that's key to understanding the universe. This is considered to be the most important scientific discovery in the 21st century. The amount of resources, decades of work, thousands of scientists and engineers joining forces to achieve something like that. Back at that time, I was a doctoral student working on my thesis about the Higgs boson. Uh, every new bit of data that came from the experiment was like a new piece of the puzzle, and it was up to us, theoretical physicists, to understand what it meant. This was truly a very motivating time that shaped my entire career. In the following decade, I continued studying the Higgs boson, and now, as a professor, I lead a research group whose goal is to understand more about it. So this talk is all about the Higgs boson. Why is it so important and what it means for the future of physics? When I was a little kid, I used to ask my mother for some unusual permissions. For example, one day I asked her if uh, I could dismantle our clothes iron. At the beginning, she hesitated, but eventually she agreed because she wanted to nurture my curiosity. I was particularly interested in three questions. What is it made of? How does it work? And why does it work the way it does? This recollection from my um, thoughts from my childhood was a perfect early glimpse into particle physics, my field of research. Just like I had to dismantle the iron to see its components and functions, in particle physics, we break down atoms to see how the world actually works. We ask the following questions. What are the elementary particles that make up everything around us? How do these particles interact? What are the fundamental forces that stick together these particles? And what are the fundamental laws of nature? And perhaps the most profound question of all, why are these laws as they are? When we break down the universe to its most basic parts, extraordinary simplicity, beauty, and unity emerges. Elementary particles are much like Lego bricks. They come in a limited variety of shapes and colors. For example, every electron that sits in every atom in the entire universe is identical to one another, just like the same type of Lego bricks. Fundamental forces are like trying to connect these Lego bricks. There are only a very few ways how we can stick together different Lego bricks. In nature, there are only very few fundamental forces between elementary particles. Just like with Lego bricks, we can build anything from simple toys to intricate sculptures. From elementary particles and fundamental forces emerges this beautiful universe, all the structures and phenomena that we see from the air we breathe to distant galaxies. Elementary particles in nature are called quarks and leptons. For example, the familiar electron and the force carrier particles, for example, the photon, particle of light. In the mid 20th century, theoretical physicists have developed a robust mathematical framework how to describe elementary particles and fundamental forces. This math merged together quantum mechanics on one side and Einstein's theory of relativity on the other side. It was very successful in describing fundamental forces. However, there was a significant puzzle that remained. This theory simply could not account for particle mass. The year is 1964, and Peter Higgs, together with other theoretical physicists, comes with this beautifully and revolutionary idea. He imagined that the universe is filled by an invisible entity called the Higgs field, which is there since the beginning of time, which appeared shortly after the Big Bang, the first moment, and stayed there since then. 
As particles move through space, they interact with this field, and that's how they get the mass. This theory is called the Higgs mechanism, and I would like to explain it on a familiar analogy. So imagine you have a large room filled with people having a party. The room represents our universe, space, and time, and the crowd represents the Higgs field. Now, imagine a celebrity enters the room. This would be Edin Dzeko, for instance, to name one example. Edin Dzeko would be the top quark, the heaviest elementary particle that we know of, with a mass of 173 in some units. Now, as Edin moves through the room, he would feel heavy and slow because people would be all on top of him and interact with him a lot. So the top quark is so heavy because it interacts significantly with the Higgs field. Now let's take a very different example, a particle called up quark. Up quark is a tiny, tiny particle which has a mass of only 0.002 in the same units. So, tiny par so uh, the, the up quark is basically like a scientist who enters a party, barely interacts with people, and has very easy time moving around, around the room. The up quark is so light because it interacts weakly with the Higgs field. This analogy helps me explain the key prediction of the theory, the existence of a new particle called the Higgs boson. So now imagine somebody shouts, Fox, here is Edin Dzeko. The cluster and the excitement of the crowd itself around this shout represents the Higgs particle. So the Higgs boson is a particle that arises as an excitement of this field, of the Higgs field. After the Higgs theory was discovered and proposed, theoretical physicists worked hard to uh, understand what it implies, what are the implications, how can we um, detect, prove or disprove this theory. For example, how can we discover the Higgs boson? This is a very famous paper by my colleagues, theoretical physicists, from 1876, in which they do the math and understand that to discover this thing is basically science fiction. There was no way, given the, the current state of the art in experiments. They actually discourage the search for the Higgs boson. Ironically, it's quite, quite often that we theorists underestimate our experimental colleagues, who are brilliant people, with the unusual gift to, to tackle challenges deemed impossible. So they, they really want us, when we come to conferences, to say something is impossible. And then, then you have their attention. CERN is a magical place, description befitting the time I spent there as a, as a research fellow. It's officially known as the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It's one of the world's most prestigious center for scientific research. It's a place where the scientists from very different backgrounds come together to work. 110 nationalities from 70 different countries. It's a place that, where cooperation transcends borders, uniting nations, universities, and scientists. This year, CERN celebrates 70th anniversary, seven decades of extraordinary contribution to science. Anyways, in 1984, um, almost a decade after this theory paper, there was an idea at CERN to build the world's most largest and powerful particle accelerator, a colossal machine which is called the Large Hadron Collider. This thing is enormous, so it is, it is buried deep beneath the Swiss-French border, and it has a circumference of 27 kilometers. Can you imagine 27 kilometers? Anyways, the idea was formed in 1984, and it took almost it was a quarter of a century, 25 years since the, the idea to the physics run. And soon after, three years later, in 2012, the announcement of the Higgs boson was there. So the Large Hadron Collider, or short LHC, it's built from superconducting magnets 
that guide and accelerate particles to enormous energies. So imagine a huge ring built with magnets of this type and particles racing in opposite directions. At certain points, these particles are made to collide. And oh boy, what a wonderful event this, this is. It's a spectacular firework, which is repeated constantly. Every 25 nanoseconds, collisions are repeated and the experiment is run for years. In each of these collisions, we are recreating the conditions that were there at the beginning of our universe, shortly after the Big Bang. So, how do we observe these collisions? Our experimental colleagues are amazing people who build these wonderful machines, particle detectors. Particle detectors capture the particles that get out from a collision, and try to reconstruct what happened. Particle detectors, you can imagine them as uh, huge cameras that take snapshots of these collisions. There is a huge amount of data that's been generated in these particle detectors, about 30 pentabytes per year. So in order to do, to understand the laws of physics, we need to push the boundaries of computing and data science. In fact, science that's been done at CERN is what we call big science. This is a kind of science that asks the most ambitious questions, which cannot be resolved by a single scientist or a single research group. It's only when the entire community unites, joins forces, and works for a very long time, it's a transgenerational project, that a discovery such as the Higgs boson can be achieved. Despite contributing to fundamental sciences, CERN has also touched our daily lives in a very unexpected way. It has contributed to the society. For instance, the World Wide Web, the first website, was created at CERN. The idea was to uh, distribute data from these particle collisions among scientists, and the web has completely changed the way we think, work, and communicate today. In addition, CERN has pioneered particle therapy for cancer research and gives hopes to patients worldwide. These two examples shows, show us unexpected benefits from investing in big science. Let's get back to physics. We have made a long way in understanding the universe, and we are proud of that. However, fundamental physics has a long list of open questions and remaining mysteries to be addressed. For example, one question uh, on which I work with my research group at the University of Basel is about the so-called flavor puzzle, and it has nothing to do with cuisine or chocolate. Um, flavor puzzle is about uh, trying to understand why different particles have so vastly different masses why is it that top quark interacts so strongly with the Higgs field, which gives, gives it a mass of 173? And, and then there is an up quark which only um, has a mass of 0 0.02. In, other, in the analogy I shared earlier, I'm basically trying to understand why in the world of particle physics, the top quark is a celebrity, is a football star, while the up quark is a scientist. What is it that makes them take those roles? The Higgs boson is at the center of this puzzle and at the center of many other remaining puzzles in fundamental physics. The discovery of the Higgs boson at the Large Hadron Collider has given us opened new avenues for exploration and it will likely drive the 21st century of physics. Higgs boson is like a lamp that is guiding a scientist through a dark and shining the unknown and leading the way. The particle physics community has recognized the special importance of the Higgs boson, and it's united in its call to policymakers to build the Higgs factory. The Higgs factory would be a future um, particle accelerator, the next generation of uh, particle accelerators, whose goal would be to study the Higgs boson to enormous precision. The Large Hadron Collider has just has discovered the Higgs boson, 
but it cannot study its finer details. By studying the, these fine details of the Higgs, we hope to understand much more about our universe. One such proposal at the table, which embodies this ambition, is called the Future Circular Collider. This could one day encircle CERN with a ring which is huge, 100 kilometers in circumference. This is a very challenging, visionary, and ambitious project that requires us to be united, to be focused, patient, and committed. The investment is significant. Large amounts of money and political will is needed to, for this experiment. However, the, the potential uh, return would be monumental. This machine has all the properties that we would like to make a next step in our understanding of the universe. And finally, if you ever want, wondered, my mother is totally pro Higgs factory, and she, if she had the money, she would give it to me to build it somewhere in between Sarajevo and Mostar. Thank you very much. Thank you.